Hey friends, this is Vidhan. Welcome you to my channel. Today we will discuss operational amplifier concept. So here we have a representative circuit for operational amplifier. This is called uh, inverting input terminal. This is called non-inverting input terminal. Why non-inverting? Because if you give an input signal, you will have output signal which has no phase change with respect to input. Why this is called inverting? Because if you give any input signal in this terminal, you will have an output with phase change of 180 degree with respect to the input. That's why it's called inverting. And here plus 15 volt, minus 15 volt are what? These are plus BCC, minus BCC. These are actually external DC supplies, DC voltages, which are for biasing the capacitors inside the operational amplifier we already know about the capacitor biasing and we already know that a capacitor cannot function cannot work if the capacitors are not properly biased with the DC voltages or by the batteries so our operational amplifier is containing a large number of capacitors therefore this operational amplifier will not work if those capacitors are not properly biased with the voltages so actually these voltages are used for biasing those capacitors and this is important for functioning of the op-amp one law is there that the output voltage of an operational amplifier can never be more than plus 15 volt and can never be less than minus 15 volt So this is one law and this is when whatever be the gain what whatever whatsoever whatsoever be the gain of the operational amplifier the output can never exit plus 15 volt and can never be less than minus 50 volt this will always be between these two volt peaks so this is what you have to remember suppose uh, according to the gain if you find the output should be 100 volt suppose if gain is very high and you have an input signal and the calculation comes that A into Bi gives you 100 volt but remember the 100 volt you will not found because your output will saturate up to 15 volt or 14 volt less than 15 volt so this happens this is to be remembered now we will discuss the characteristics of the ideal operational amplifier these are the seven characteristics that i have written down for ideal operational amplifier the first one is that infinite voltage gain now ideal operational amplifier you first of all let me tell you that open loop operational amplifier is the ideal operational amplifier open loop operational amplifier is ideal operational amplifier so this is open loop operational amplifier so this is ideal operational amplifier and for this the voltage gain is infinite but remember this is extra thing that i am telling you that i am going to tell that if this is a feedback circuit suppose i attach a feedback circuit with this operational amplifier let us say the negative feedback circuit in the next video we will see that then the voltage gain of the operational amplifier is not infinite remember if this is uh, uh, if this is feedback circuit then for that the voltage gain is not infinite the voltage gain it is actually finite and voltage gain we choose we decide that what should be the voltage gain of this circuit actually there is a formula that a is equals to the gain is minus rf by r1 for negative feedback circuit so if we use a specific rf and r1 then we could have any gain for the operational amplifier let us suppose we want that the operational amplifier should have a gain 10 then we can have a gain of 10 by suppose i use 10 ohm for rf and uh, sorry 100 ohm for rf and 10 ohm for r1 and thus we could have a minus 10 at least the magnitude is 10 so this way using the feedback circuit we could have any gain as we wish as we want but for the ideal operational amplifier that means for the open loop operational amplifier it is infinite 
now one more thing that it is not exactly infinite for open loop it is not exactly infinite because it is a huge and that huge number is said infinite for example 741c has open loop voltage gain a equal to 10 to the power 5 so this is the open loop voltage gain that means under ideal condition and this is a huge but see it's a definite number it's a finite number it is not infinite but since it is huge we generally say it is infinite for open loop well but it's not a problem we may say infinite so for all the given operational amplifier whenever you purchase an operational amplifier then the 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 manufacturer gives you the data for each the data for the voltage gain and there is a fixed voltage gain even if it is very large even if it is very huge number but it is specified it is a fixed number and it is provided whenever you purchase the operational amplifier okay so these were the two points about the first statement that infinite voltage gain that means the gain of the ideal is infinite but remember the gain of the non-ideal that means the feedback circuit is finite and it is whatever we choose okay that means uh, why do we use the feedback circuit to limit the gain to limit the gain according to our convenience according to our purpose well so now let us go to the second that it says infinite input resistance we know infinite input resistance and let us suppose a voltage v we want to give as the input in this terminal let us suppose positive we could also give it as a negative terminal and check but positive terminal so this voltage will make a current according to the resistance in this circuit in the whole circuit okay in the whole circuit means this now it says that since it is a uh, operational amplifier uh, and uh, ideal operational pressure so it has infinite input resistance so the input resistance is infinite suppose it is infinite input resistance we know that voltage drops itself and makes a current and how much current it makes it makes a current according to the resistance so according to the ohm's law so let us go by the ohm's law that v is equals to i into r so voltage drops and it makes a current according to the resistance now suppose this signal we have taken and this will drop itself and it will make a current according to the resistance now the resistance is infinite so since the it is infinite so it is i into infinite v and v by infinite is i and anything is by infinite is zero so i is zero from ohm's law that means when the input resistance is infinite then voltage cannot drop that means the current is zero that means voltage cannot drop voltage is not dropping current is not getting produced you understood this is called no loading condition no loading condition means when voltage doesn't drop and doesn't make doesn't change into current voltage doesn't drop and doesn't change into current because of the high resistance this condition is called no loading and what is the loading condition generally we know any voltage given will drop itself to make current according to the resistance and that dropping and producing the current is called the loading condition so it is no loading condition no loading condition when no loading condition when infinite input resistance is there so what happens that at each point you have the same voltage you have same voltage at this point v at this point v at this point v at this point also v so whole circuit has same voltages so the voltage is as it is at all the points so it says no loading in the part of circuit before op amp so this is the part of the circuit before the operational amplifier 
and here no loading condition is prevailing that means the voltage is not getting dropped and the voltage is not changing into current this is called no loading condition so when it happens when infinite input resistance is there then it says any signal could drive the operational amplifier any signal could drive the operational amplifier when infinite input resistance is there how we know that the operational amplifier is for what for a signal a signal is generally weak signal very feeble very faint signal and that signal has to be amplified as the large signal now if there is low resistance suppose it is not infinite it is very low suppose it is very small resistance now for the small resistance our given voltage which is already very faint very weak will drop itself and make current that means loading condition will happen if the resistance is less i am telling again if the resistance is less then the voltage will drop itself and make current according to the ohm's law because resistance will be less so the less resistance by v by less resistance will make some current so there will be some current in the circuit that means loading will happen loading effect will happen and in that condition our signal will disappear our signal will vanish because when our signal that is the voltage that is very weak and that voltage has changed into current because of the less resistance then our voltage has disappeared and there's that disappeared voltage now will make no effect on the operational amplifier so it will produce no output voltage but when the infinite input resistance is infinite then it is no loading condition that means voltage is not changing into current then at each point the voltage is same so even if the voltage is very weak but at each point voltage is same and here also it is v and this signal will make an impact on the operational amplifier and if it will find out it will produce a output according to the gain isn't it that is why it says that when it is infinite then any signal any weak signal could drive the operational amplifier because the signal is not dissipating when the signal is not dissipating then it will really affect or affect the operational amplifier and finally we have output here okay so these two points are clear these are the two main points i think that when no loading in the part of the circuit before opamp so no loading that means current is not produced by the voltage in the part of the circuit before the operational amplifier because it is infinite input resistance and also this may be any weaker voltage but this will make output voltage this is also because this input resistance is infinite now the third is third is zero output resistance now if the output resistance is zero suppose we have got a output voltage and output voltage is a higher voltage obviously obviously within 15 and minus 15 but it is higher let us suppose 12 volt now this 12 volt if the resistance would be greater if the output resistance would be greater then that 12 volt would also drop by some amount so we will have a less amount of voltage and that less amount of voltage uh, what is the use uh, then there is no use so that's why uh, for ideal condition the output resistance should be lesser so that whatever voltage we get we should get it and and we should we should use it for another device to operate another device okay and we should not lose our output voltage uh, we should not lose it 
while going through the output resistance so output resistance should be zero okay now the then the fourth is zero output voltage when input voltage is zero this is also called output offset voltage it means if there are no inputs suppose there is no input then the output should also be zero if there are no inputs but there is output then it is it is noise so output offset voltage should be zero then next infinite bandwidth that means this operational amplifier should amplify voltages or signals of any frequency from zero hertz to infinite hertz this is what it says and then it says infinite cmrr cmrr is ad by acm ad is the difference gain and acm is the common mode game now for difference gain should be very higher and common mode gain should be common mode gain should be very lower what is common mode gain common mode gain is actually if we connect these two inputs and give a common input signal b then the common mode gain should be zero actually the output should be zero if output is zero then obviously the gain is zero why because uh, we know that output is uh, gain into input so if there is an input then obviously the gain is zero that's why the output is zero so gain should be zero that means output is should also be zero so the condition for this that acm should be zero if the denominator is zero then this part would be infinite this part would be infinite so this is uh, this should happen for ideal operational amplifier acm should be zero but ad should be higher now slew rate slew rate is what slew rate is if i change the input suppose in any one terminal i change the input suddenly then how fast the output also change this is the slew rate slew rate is that is why called the maximum rate of change of output in unit time okay that means how fast it changes and for how much values like uh, for example 741c has slew rate of 0.5 volt per microsecond that means within one microsecond up to 0.5 volt if changed in the input then the output will also change but it could take uh, it could uh, have the value up to 0.5 volt so this is very less number and that is why 741 has a drawback in slew rate its slew rate is very less so it can't be used in the high frequency circuits like oscillators comparator ADC whereas there is a circuit uh, there is a amplifier that is LM318 which has a slew rate of 70 volt per microsecond that means within one microsecond up to 70 volt change if done in the input it can process in the output also within one microsecond up to 70 volt so this is great convenience and uh, this is very powerful well so this was the discussion about uh, the characteristics for ideal and a little bit about non-ideal in the first case we saw so hope this will help you and in the next video we will be seeing the circuits open loop circuits and the feedback circuits and we will also see that what are the differences between them thank you